And we return to our top story. The Tsar on moves to strengthen water security in Singapore, with water demand expected to double by 2065. Our plans are underway to expand the upcoming Tuas new water factory and triple the amount of water that it can recycle per day. And for more, we're joined by Associate Professor Darren Sun. He's from the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the Nanyang Technological University. Thanks so much for coming. I mean, President, he's also co-founder of Nano Sun. That's a deep tech water solutions spin-off from NTU. Sun. That's right. Sorry, pardon me for mispronouncing. It's Darren's son. Okay. All right. Uh, water so, uh, self-sufficiency. Uh, first, very quickly define it and tell me how close we are to achieving that self-sufficiency. All right. This is actually a good question. Most of people asking that question because they worry for tomorrow. If you look back the history, we started new water the system testing back into the 1974. After one year test, we made a conclusion. We said, too costly, expensive. But 10 years after, this become a possible because the membrane available, this membrane called reverse osmosis. Another 10 years back into the 1990s, this is where I'm starting to join Nanyang Technology University. And under the PUB, which is a pioneering new water system, and inventing the new water system, certainly we found the world totally changed in there. So what we did in here, under the PUB Guard, we invest a lot of our innovative technology. We put a membrane into the traditional wastewater treatment plant. This is called membrane bioreactor. We certainly found the water treatment can be inexpensive, convert wastewater, become a cost-effective possible. So, in other words, tech reduces the cost of doing these things that are essential for our self-sufficiency in water. Are we 100% self-sufficient? If we are not, how long before we are? Okay, technology is continuing to, to move and the new tech is coming as well. We are talking about the artificial intelligence today. You know how impactful to our water treatment? This is optimizing our energy How? consumption. Just give me one clear example, okay. AI and AI. water. We can use the technology, optimize currently the energy used today can reduce that possibility to be uh, no, no, 10%, 20%, all the way move up. And the new technology currently, we may find out it is may not necessary to use heavy aeration. Therefore, the new technology, what for? Nano bubble confinement reaction process. This is effectively can remove lots, lots of impossible emerging contaminants, which is polluting the membrane today we are using. So this is open a new window and the water can be positively inexpensive. For the past 10 years, you so know... So if this qualifies as purification, certainly not desalination, what would this... This is not... Is it recycling, purification? What, when you talk about nano bubble, what is that? Okay, thank you. Yeah. For the question, desalination means the filtration membrane using osmosis to remove the unwanted or the salt it will be there. But the filtration membrane is another type of the membrane to filtering this of a size bigger than the pore of the membrane. Mm -hmm. So, and if this material, we call following material, stuck on the membrane surface, therefore we need more the energy to push the water to be in. Is there any other new technology? Can we remove that before they reach membrane? Can we? Yes. Nano bubble is the one way we can do so the cost of the water production can be lower. What we did in here in the 10 years ago, and we started a new company and complete found lab research to the commercial application. And one year ago, we received the award from ESG, JTC, supported by PUB to demonstrate such technology and on Jurong Island. Multi-international company, they are benefited from that. Certainly, they found impossible become a possible. What's that means? All right, so, from impossible to possible. So, for example, let's look at uh, industrial water mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, it will account for two-thirds of our demand by 2065. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, you're talking in glowing terms of where we are on tech, but the very Correct. fact that you are still involved in it suggests that there is a great deal of improvement still in the works. So how can we recycle, reuse this industrial water so that by 2065, two thirds, mm. we are able to meet that? Okay, the, the spin-off company from NTU, we already demonstrated the technology currently is able to convert this such high-stress industrial water, become a new water standard. 
And it's not for non-portable use, of course, for industrial So from recovery, demonstration to actually being deployed, what do you need? It is actually large plant now. So the multi-international companies currently offer a full scale. Imagine this is multi-million dollars they are willing to pay because with that, they are sustainable. So conservative of natural resources by using the water we supply. Instead, they're self-sustained. So sustainable, it is one of the key for the business development. Imagine Jurong Island, huge, this kind of multi-international company. So the potential is certainly the there, but we're waiting for investment and I suppose putting in uh, tech into actual play. Thanks so much for coming yeah. this evening. Social Professor Darren Sun from NTU and Spinner. Thank you.